Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got something uh, a bit different that I think will will please a lot of you. Uh, we get a lot of requests on the channel for more of these between one and nine Sudokus. They're clearly a very popular variant. And today uh, we're going to showcase a viewer puzzle. Um, so Isaac uh, Resnikov sent us this via our Twitter account. Uh, it's apparently it's his first ever uh, attempt at composing a Sudoku. Um, now Mark had a go at it and said it's a great puzzle, so he suggested we, I should do it for a video, which is what I'm going to do now. Um, so thanks very much Isaac for sending this in. I hope this isn't going to be too monstrously hard. Um, let's remind ourselves of the rules of how these puzzles work. Let's uh, just put a couple of numbers in to illustrate it. So if, if we found that column 1 had a 1 here and a 9 here, then what this 19 outside the grid is telling us is that the sum of the three cells between the 1 and the 9 have got to sum up to 19. And obviously we've got one of these numbers for every single row and column. And they're going to be extremely important in terms of how we solve the puzzle, not least because this, this puzzle only has two given digits in it, two ones in these positions. Now, so how do we go about solving this sort of thing? Well, those of you who've been following the channel will know that Tom Collier, former UK Sudoku champion, has a method, uh, and that method is to start by identifying obviously all the numbers one, all of the instances of the numbers one and nine. But to do that, he does it by identifying all the squares that cannot contain the numbers one and nine. And I'm going to I'm going to try that. I found that to be pretty effective. So what? which cells can't contain the numbers 1, 9. If we have a look at this central cell in the 4 in the column, 4 can only appear on its own because if we have two cells that sum to 4, we'd have to have a 1. So if we try and make this cell and this cell sum to 4, we would have a repeated 1 in the column. So we know that the 4 is either going to be here or here. Now that tells us neither of these squares can be a 1 or a 9. So I'm going to enter X's to illustrate where the numbers 1 and 9 can't go. We can do that as well, I guess. Um, okay. Now, actually, column 9, we can actually enter a number into. Have a think about it if you can't see why that's the case. Now, the reason is a number as big as 35 is incredibly restrictive because any column or any row or any 3x3 block of any Sudoku uh, of this size will contain the numbers from 1 to 9. And if you add those numbers up, add all the numbers from 1 to 9, you get 45. So I know the total for this whole column is 45. But this is telling me that the numbers between the 1 and the 9 add to 35. Well, 1 and 9 on their own obviously sum to 10. So in fact, 35 is telling me this square here has got to be a 9, and therefore I, I'll just be able to put 35, or numbers totaling 35, into the 7 cells between the 1 and the 9. So that is useful, because I can then, I guess, put x's into all of these cells. Now this 5, that's telling me obviously this can't be a 1 or a 9, because I need to put numbers totaling 5 between the 1 and the 9. Now 5 is either going to be just on its own, you know, this digit could be a 5, or it could be 2 and 3. So it's possible that this cell won't be a 1 or a 9. So one of these two squares is a 1 or a 9, but certainly nothing further away. So we can fill those in. Uh, actually, we can do the same thing, can't we, in row 9. Look at that, we've got exactly the same sort of condition with this 5 here. So again, this can never be a 1 or a 9, because if it was, that would imply there was a 0 total between the numbers 1 and 9. The 1 can go here or here, but it can't go further away. And now my eyes are drawn to these 19s. Because this is a this is a strange Sudoku in a number of ways. Because odd numbers, um, strange numbers, become significant. 
Now here, let's imagine that we try to put, I mean clearly we can't put a 1 or a 9 in this square anyway because there has to be a 12 total between the 1 and the 9, so let's, let's actually look at this example. Can this be a 1 or a 9? And the answer is no, because these x's on the edge of the grid are incredibly powerful. If I try and put a 9 in here, I now have to put cells totaling 19 between the 1 and the 9. Now I could put the 1 here, that would be the furthest away it could be from the 9. But that only gives me two cells to make a total of 19, which is clearly not enough, especially as I can't use a 9 to make that total. So that's not 1 or a 9 either. 15, I suppose, is just possible. We could have 7 and 8 being between the 1 and the 9, so I can't rule out this square. Um, hmm. Okay, but here we have another example of some really lovely logic that these puzzles present from time to time. Let me just think about this. For, yes, okay, so we know that the 9 is here or here. And if we scoot down the grid, we know there's a 1 here or here. So let's ask ourselves, is it possible that the 9 up here and the 1 down here are in the same column? Well, clearly it's not, because if they were in the same column, one of these sums here would have to be 35, which it's not, 0 or 6. So if this is the 9, this will be a 1. And if this is a 9, this will be a 1. Now, does that matter? It does matter a bit, doesn't it? Because let's imagine that the 9 was here. This is a total of 0. So if the 9 is here, this would have to be a 1. And, and similarly, if on the other hand this is not a 9, if this is not a 9, we know... Uh, what do we know? If this is not a 9 this is a 9, this will be a 1, so there'll be a 1 here and a 9 here. So either way I can eliminate exit, I can put x's in along all of those squares. That is very very nice. Now I can do something similar with the 6 I think. So if this is the 9 I can never have a situation where this is 9, 6, 1, for example, because that's going to give us three instances of the numbers 1 and 9 in a single block, which that, that just breaks basic Sudoku rules. So, if, on the other hand, this is a 1 down here, I get the same problem. This can never be a 9 for the same reason. So I know that this 6 total is always going to be a two-digit version of a 6, and because it can't be a 1, 5, because that's going to repeat the 1 in the column, it's going to have to be 2 and 4. So if this is the 9, we're going to have 9, 9 here, then 2, 4, 1. So this cell and this cell can be a 1 or a 9, or on the other hand this can be a 1 and this can be a 9. Exactly the same logic, just upside down. And again, I get to put in loads more x's um, into those squares. So we're getting a very strange pattern of x's here. Now can I use it to my advantage? Um, let me see. So we now know... Whoa, there's all sorts of things I'm seeing here. Right, let's have a look at this 4 firstly. Um, so, 4, we've already seen it with the column here. It's got to be a number on its own. So, that, so there's going to be a 149 or a 941 as a string of three cells in this row of the grid. So can this be a 1? Clearly not, because that's going to be 1, 4, 9. And we've proved, because of the sort of x-wing logic, this square can, cannot be a 1 or a 9. So neither can this one. 
So now, one of these two squares is a one. Can't quite see how to prove which way around that goes. One of these two squares is a nine. Ah, okay. But again, we've got something interesting going on here because of this 19 sum. If this is the 9, where can the 1 go? It has to be at least 3 cells away. So if this is a 9, this cell can't be a 1. This would have to be a 1. So if this is a 9, this is a 1. And if vice versa, if this is a 9, this is a 1. So in, it's impossible that those two squares are one, are, are, well, are one or nine. Okay. Now, sorry, I'm just trying to do some calculating in my head here. Um, Nine one one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. This is rather clever. Let's look at this possibility. Let's just analyze for a moment whether this square here can be a nine. I'll put it in to illustrate. If this is a nine, watch what happens. Because of this zero, this square here will have to be a one. Now look at this 15 total here. This 15 total means that the 9 in this column it can, can never be below the 1. There's not going to be enough space. It's going to have to be in one of these two squares. But watch. As this is the 9, this square here is going to be a 1. And the moment I put a 1 into this square that is not part of this 0 combination, this zero combination now can never be these two squares. It's forced downwards. So as these two squares are not one and nine, and I put a one here, this must be a nine. And watch, have you spotted what's gonna happen? I put the nine here. I identified from this 15 total that one of these squares was a nine. It now can't be this one. It has to be that one. Whoops, we've now broken the logic in this row. This row says that the numbers or the cells between the numbers 1 and 9 have to add to 13. Here they add to 0. There's no gap at all. All of which means very, it's a really nice chain that this square here is not a 9. Now I'm hoping that proving this is a 9 will therefore be really as powerful because now obviously this square can't be a 1, neither can this one. So the one is here, and what does that mean? Well, same logic is now lovely in this box, isn't it? This square cannot be a one or a nine, because if it is, I still need to put a one or a nine in these two squares, and the moment I do that, the other one also must be a one or a nine. So this must, oops must go like this, 9 and 1. Um, these two squares now between the numbers 1 and 9 need to add to 5. We'll put that in later. I'm just going to try and get all the 1s and 9s first. We need to make the number 13 in this row between a 1 and a 9. So this can't be a 9 because this square would then have to be 13, <laughs> which is not possible. So that means that's a 9 there. This can't be a 1 or a 9. This can't be a 1 or a 9 because it's too far away from the 9. So this is a 1. That means this is a 5. But as I say, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, we've already got the 1s and 9s in this column. So this must be a 9. This must be a 9 because we know that the we need at least two cells to add to 14. Neither of these squares can be 
uh, a 1 or a 9 because we need at least 3 squares to get to the 19 total here. That's going to be, because it's a 4 total, this will be a 1. We need 15 at least, so neither of these can be uh, a 1 or a 9. Can't have a repeated 9 here, oh, so that's very restricted. Look, I need to put a 9 somewhere, that's going to have to be there. Neither of these can be a 1 or a 9, it's already a 1 and a 9 in the column. Um, can probably do something over there now. Yes, we could have put that in before, that's a 9. That must be a 1, which works. This is an X, this is a 9. And I see, okay, so I need to put a 1 there so I can put a 7 between, and that's a 1. So this is the arrangement of 1s and 9s that we're going to get in the puzzle. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete all of these Xs. So I'm going to pause the video for a second. Okay, so there we go. Now often, I found with these puzzles, once once you get to this stage, the puzzle becomes quite doable. So let's let's see if that proves to be the case here. So let's firstly we can fill in all of the uh, all of the givens that we've got. This must be a seven. Um, this must be a four. This must be a four. This must be two and four because they total six between the one and the nine. Therefore, actually, that resolves these two squares. These must now be 3 and 2. Uh, this must be a 5, by the looks of it. So this, these two squares now have to sum to 9 without using 1, 8, without using 2, 7, without using 4, 5. So this is a 3, 6 pair. Um, 12 here, so we can't do anything with that. Ah, we've got a 7 here, so this square must be a 2. I'm going to start also highlighting when we've, when we've totally exhausted all of the information that we've got from columns, because uh, that's often, it's a very good way of spotting where the next step's going to be. So, actually my eyes have now fallen on this 20 cage, we can actually use arithmetic on this one because we've got the 1 and the 9 so far apart. We've only got two cells here outside of the 1 to 9 total plus 20. So 1 plus 9 plus 20 is 30. This square and this square have got to add up to 15 without using a 9. So this must be 7 and 8 in these extremities. Um, so I'm going to say that we've used the information there. We've obviously used this information here. Zero we've done. Four we've done. Fourteen we've not done. Five we've done. Uh, da, da, ah, here's another one here. Nineteen. And the total has to include a four. So these two squares have got to sum up to fifteen. Again, without using a nine, that must be seven and eight. Uh, so we can highlight that one. We've done that one. And the 35 is done as well. Okay. So here we've got a choice, I think. We can either use start using normal Sudoku rules, or we can continue to use the numbers. So this 12 total here can be 4 or 5 now, combining with the 7 and the 8. What else can, can I see, if anything? Um, it's going to be a 4 locked into one of these two squares. So this 13, this 13, this has got to be a 5 or a 6, this has got to be a 7 or an 8. Still not that helpful. Ah, but this 3 and 2 now becomes interesting, because this total here doesn't include a 3 and a 2. Where can I put a 3 and a 2 in this box? You can see they can only go into these three squares. But that means the 3 and the 2 over on this side, in this 3 by 3 block, are f they're forced into these two squares in row 2. So that's, that's a nice spot. 2, 3... 
wonder if that is obviously there must be a four in here but that's not terribly helpful um, this 15 is a little bit restricted and this 19 actually perhaps we can use that there must always be an eight eight seven four is one option but that's ruled out because we can of this eight seven here we cannot have eight seven and four in these three squares because that repeats or well, there's then nothing I can put in this square here so in fact and if I try seven six five seven six five adds to eighteen so I know that there is an eight in this uh, in these three cells so this is not an eight that resolves that like that and also importantly now this must be 568 because that's the only way of getting to 19 so there may be a way of restricting that further but let's put the 5, 6 and the 8 in so we need 2, 3 and 4 into the outside cells we have a 2 and a 3 in row 1 already that's a 4 therefore this is a 2 or a 3 and we've used the 19 so let's remove that from our consideration. Um, ah, this 4 here is useful. That, this square here now must be a 4. That resolves the 12 total. That must be 8 and 7 like that. This can no longer be an 8. Uh, let's highlight the 12. Uh, what next? Five, six, seven, eight, bother. Ah, how about this 15 total now? We've now got two and four already. So the only way of getting to 15 is with a three and a six. And this cannot be a three, look, because there's already a three in the block. So that's a six and that's a three. So can we use this three anywhere? If we can, I'm not seeing how. And 5, 7, 8 to complete. So this is a 5 or an 8. 5, 7, 8, 7, 8 there. I was hoping we'd have done better than that, but that's a bit irritating. So this is a 5 or an 8 as well, just to complete this block. So we've got a 5, 8 pair now in row 1 which means these two squares now have to be 6 and 7 and that is helpful because it's going to resolve the 13 total and also that must be this way round so this is 8 and this is 5 6, 7, 6, 7 so this is now 4, 6, 7 along here which means this is 5 not four, five. Um, can I see anything else of this? I guess we can delete or we can say that we've done the 13. We've done the 15. We haven't done 14 yet down here. Oh, this actually, I should have seen this before. This is an obvious one. This must be six and eight because it can't include a nine. So that must now be eight there and six here. That probably cracks the puzzle. That's, I'm sorry, I didn't see that earlier. That's um, perils of solving on a computer. Okay, so eight, eight. This square here must be an eight now. It's the only place an eight can go in column one. Uh, this is a five or a six, but it can't be a six because of the six there. And hopefully now we are on the right track to a solution. This is a great puzzle. I mean, what an amazing puzzle to come up with as your first ever Sudoku construction. Um, very, very well played. Could maybe use uniqueness to resolve that, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to rely on uniqueness. I don't think it should be necessary. Um, so we need two, three, and a four here. So that, you know, if you have a look at this two, three pair here, obviously that's not possible. These, 
you couldn't have this deadly pattern where it can't be resolved by the numbers between the 1 and the 9 which would be another way of if this 4 wasn't in the grid we could automatically rule this out this square would have to be a 4 um, that's 3, that's 2, that's 2, that's 3 7, 7, 7, 7 uh, 3, 6 and 8 along here so this is an 8, oops, not a 6 6, 3 like that 2, 5, 7 to complete the block so this must be a 7, the 2 and the 5 are locked into these two squares like that uh, this must be 6 and 8 so that again resolves itself in that order this must be 3 and 7 resolves itself in that order 7, 7 this must be an 8 only place an 8 can go and I think I think we're on the home stretch it's simply a matter now of just filling in the rest of the digits so this is going to be 6 7 7 there 2, 4, 5 down here so oops, 4 5, 2, 3, 6 is resolved, I've just spotted there's a 6 hidden away right on that side, um, now that makes that a 6 I think, a square here a 2, 2, 5, 5, 3, 3, 2, Four. and there we go a wonderful puzzle thank you very much Isaac for sending that in I hope you guys had a go at it before I did and enjoyed it as much as I did really brilliant stuff um, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic if you do enjoy the Between 1 and 9 Sudokus you could consider sponsoring us on Patreon where this month um, we have designed one of these for our patrons so that's two dollars a month um, and you'll get immediate access to that puzzle and shortly, for $3 a month, you get access to a video talking about how to solve that puzzle. So, um, you know, some of you might be interested in that. Thanks very much for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.